What's going on, guys? This. Right here. This thing. FX3. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Um, I love it. It's been great. It feels really awesome. Just want to say a big thanks to ProCam. Yeah, it's a great camera. It's very similar and different to basically the a7s3 we all know that it's very similar to the a7s3 um it's basically the a7s3 but in a cinema form including the you know the the cooling fan keep it nice and cool for you guys but yeah this camera's been great i've been able to go out and shoot with it a little bit i'm actually going to be able to go out and shoot with it a little bit more tomorrow pro cam is actually having an intro to digital for an intro to digital photography class um i think it's going to be great I would, uh, I think people should go ahead and learn all they can about photography, especially, you know, at a really cool place like ProCam. Just, they've been great. Anyways, so back to this. This thing is a beast. I've been able to shoot with it a little bit. There are some key differences. I'm used to shooting on the A7S III, the A7 III, or the A7 IV. Along that line, yes, I did come from Canon. So going over to the whole Sony thing, as we all know, was a big thing for me, but I, you know, I never really fell in love with Canon. It just happened to be my first camera. Um, as soon as I got my hands on Sony, it was a it was a completely different ball game for me. I absolutely fell in love with the way the camera shot, way it felt, um, how it handles certain colors or certain dynamic ranges, or just some of the options that it was offering above Canon. You know, like not overheating. Yeah, um, this thing I've in you know I've run it in the you know don't turn off until over heat, the high temperature threshold and all that. Um, I've never even had it reach that, especially with the cooling fan. Um, I've never even had it get even close to uncomfortably warm in my hand. It does come with the, there, like I said, there are some many form factor differences with this camera compared to the A7 line or the A7 and all those. This definitely has more of that cine body feel. It's got a little bit more boxier of a shape. I feel this is more based towards the videographer slash cinematographer, whereas the A7 III's, A7S III, the A7 IV that I'm shooting this on right now has more of that photographer feel. Now, coming from those cameras to this cameras, it did take a little bit of getting used to. The mode, the mode button is where the menu button used to be, and now we don't have the dial for mode on this because essentially that's where the record button is because this is a cinema camera, so record is the most important part. And some of the other little things like this little nippled toggle wheel is in a different location. Some of the rear buttons do something slightly different. So what I had to do just to get it more similar to the way my A7IVs and A7IIIx is I went ahead and customized all the buttons. Now, the menu inside is almost identical to the A7IV, A7S III. The same setup and everything with the side menu, not like the A7III where everything was up at the top. The top one just drove me absolutely nuts. I love this new menu setup. It's got the same codex, um, picture profiles. You've got your flag, you got your S-Log 3s. What else? I don't know, but it, I just enjoy shooting on it. But yeah, other than that, guys, this camera, it, yes, it's a little pricey. <laughs> I agree, it's definitely a little... Oh, 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 quarter 20s. Yes, it has quarter 20s on it. I usually put it on my rig and suited up with my handle and my follow focus and my side handle and battery and blah, monitor and this that and the other so i necessarily don't use this but the top handle boop, 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 boop. see that boom okay i don't necessarily use this because if i'm going to capture audio i usually cap i usually capture it off camera you know in a recorder or something like this but i usually use the on body audio a scratch audio for syncing or anything like this. So yes, this is good to have. Yes, if you're like a stringer or something like this and you're not trying to carry around extra audio, having this on top is fine. But I like to put a rig on it, throw the top panel on it, cage it up, da 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 da, throw a mic on there via this, or like I said, record separate audio and this just uses a scratch audio. But yeah, this little XLR handle, just go ahead and slide in the hot shoe like that. Boop, boop, boop. And boom, you got yourself a top handle. This is cool back in like the skateboard. But yeah, pretty much that's it guys. Um, this is the Sony FX3. I would love to actually put a side by side with the FX30 and my Sony a7 IV because I've seen a couple of reviews where these are stacked up against each other. And I'm kind of interested to see if I can't push their limits and find some more differences. But from what I've seen, 
the A7 IV. How does it look right now? It's what's, what's being recorded on right now is the A7 IV. Um, yeah, there are some slight differences, like the rolling shutter, for instance, it's a little worse in the A7 IV. It's obviously a little bit better in here. The one thing that I've noticed, this is lacking though. It is lacking. Thank you for the fan, but ND. No internal NDs. That was a letdown. I was really hoping to see that, but eh, I use a map box anyway, slap it on there, variable ND, we're good. But yeah, guys, this is the FX3. Let's take this off and boom. Thank you all very much. Once again, ProCam, thank you guys very much. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel where I'm gonna be doing a lot of these, doing some BTS, some shorts, some tips and tricks. It's gonna be fun. I hope to see you guys soon. Keep following the channel and um, peace. See you guys.